Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and today's painting demo is inspired by a recent trip to our local beach. But rather than simply telling you all about it, I thought it might be a bit more fun to show you instead. Welcome to our local beach and one of my favourite places of all time. We had a lovely bit of sunshine here in the UK over the weekend and decided to take full advantage of it. After taking a seat on one of these handy little posts, I decided to do a little bit of plein air sketching in my small sketchbook. We had a wonderful time just walking, talking and of course sketching and while I did get rather distracted watching this handsome black bat girl catching a crab in the surf for his, uh, his mid-morning snack, uh, we were quickly reminded that uh, it would soon be time for our own lunch. So uh, after finishing off my sketching, uh, we headed back to the studio for uh, some chips and of course to uh, get together a, uh, a finished painting. Welcome back to the studio. As you can see I've got my board and paper all set up to begin painting. I was inspired today to paint a tide line of sorts, standing on the edge of the sea and watching the gentle waves rolling in over the surf and hearing that wonderful sound made me want to try and paint uh, a similar scene of the uh, sea just rolling gently over the stones and sand. Uh, these are the photographs, or at least some of them. <laughs> I took quite a few uh, that inspired uh, this painting today. You can see we've got this diagonal shape. Um, so what I've done is I've penciled in a few sort of stones and shells and sort of bits and bobs of flotsam to create uh, a shoreline or a tide line uh, going diagonally flowing across the paper from left to right and I'm going to be using my Pebeo brand drawing gum to mask them all out. You can see here uh, these are the pebbles and the sort of bits and bobs. This is the first layer of masking fluid. After that I added um, a second layer of masking fluid using an art sponge to just lightly dab on the rough shape of uh, a gentle wave rolling in that uh, sweeping diagonal following the path of those stones. Uh, the sponge gave it a lovely um, soft texture which uh, you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly once I've got some paint on the board, it uh, tends to show up a lot better. Uh, just wanted to simulate that sort of loose feeling of a wave rolling in over the uh, over the sand and over the stones. So to do this I'm going to be painting wet in wet today um, and the first step is to just cover the entire sheet of paper with clean water ready for the wash. For the sea I'm using some cerulean blue to begin with, lovely bright uh, clean blue, one of my favourite colours. And as you can see I'm just making sure I've got good coverage of blue on that sort of top left corner, sweeping down in a diagonal motion and just bringing the blue up roughly across the area where I have begun to draw in the stones and pebbles. And now this is just a little indigo as well. I've added this to just give a little bit of depth and shadow into the water and I'm applying it with my flat brush and now layering a little more cerulean over the top to just get some really sort of nice soft uh, lines and transitions between the colours. And now to begin the uh, beach section, I'm beginning with a little bit of raw sienna to just lay down this soft sand coloured uh, base for the bottom diagonal. Uh, and I'm just going to be backing that up with a little bit 
of yellow ochre, which is uh, this lovely strong bold colour, which I think uh, really helps the beach stand up against that lovely bright cerulean blue. As you can see, I switched over to using my large mop brush to uh, put these colours in. I just found it gives me a little bit more control for this section and of course carries plenty of uh, water and paint. And you can see I'm just using the, the shape of the mop brush to just loosely add in these sort of sweeps of yellow ochre over the paler raw sienna and just building a little bit of interesting shape and colour into this beach. I'm pulling the colour all the way towards the water but not quite going over the edge there and mixing it with the blues because I don't want to make too much green. <laughs> However I am also using here, this is yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of neutral tint to just dull it down and I'm just adding a few lines across this midsection here uh, just to mimic the colour of damp sand underneath that sea. Next I'm just adding some spatter detail using some Van Dyke Brown and doing it wet and wet to get some lovely movement and you can see I'm just lifting the bottom corner and allowing everything to just move slowly downwards following that diagonal path. So this is the first wash finished and what I'm going to do is I'm going to prop my board up diagonally just by popping my, uh, my bottle of masking fluid under one corner. Uh, and I'm going to leave it there to dry so that we get everything sort of flowing downhill but at an angle following the uh, sort of sweep of the beach towards the sea and I'm just going to give the paint a little bit of extra encouragement with some more quite watered down Van Dyke Brown and a little extra squirt from my uh, spray bottle here. And now as that painting is drying diagonally um, I'm going to add a little extra salt uh, for some texture because uh, why not? Uh, this is entirely optional of course, but uh, you can see I'm just going to put a very light sprinkling over some parts of my painting to just see if I can pull an extra little bit of texture out of that water and uh, out of that sand. This is just regular cheap table salt, nothing fancy, you don't have to get anything expensive, just your bog standard regular salt will do. And here we are, this is the uh, the painting now that it's dry, you can see we've got a few lovely salt effects scattered across in the uh, sea and the sand. So now that it is fully dry I'm going to begin removing the masking fluid, which you can do as uh, you see here just by rubbing with your fingertip. And here we are, this is uh, the result, you can see the masking fluids worked really nicely to keep all the uh, shapes that I drew out previously clear from the uh, from the wash. So now it's time to fill in these shapes, these lovely stones and shells that I drew out earlier and this for me is um, such a fun part of the process. I'm going to be painting these wet and wet uh, individually one by one just using a small brush basically just wetting the individual shapes, dropping a little paint in dropping in a couple of different colours, you see here I'm using some Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of neutral tint, uh, and just allowing the colours to float together, to marry and mingle and just create some really beautiful um, patterns and textures on their own. Now this is quite a slow process, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm not going to show you me painting in every single one of these because quite honestly I don't think I'd watch that either. However, I'm just going to show you a couple of close-ups just so that you can get the idea of how I painted in this beach. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to stop wittering, put on a little bit of music and I really hope that you relax uh, and enjoy my <laughs> favourite stage um, of this painting.
once all my wet and wet painting was dry, I was able to go back over and add any extra little details that were needed, such as a little bit of careful patterning on this starfish. Also added in a few extra decorative strands of seaweed using Van Dyke Brown and uh, my small fine detail brush as you see here. This is uh, just a piece of what's commonly known as uh, bladder rack. We get washed up on the tie line around here quite commonly. It's just a little brown lacy seaweed and it's known for having these little air pockets along its strands, little circular floats that help it to stay on the surface of the water. At this point I also decided to add a little bit of spatter across the surface of the beach using my fan brush and uh, a little bit of watered down Van Dyke Brown. You can see here I'm just lightly tapping the fan brush um, against the handle of another smaller brush just to get these delicate small little surface spatters across this sort of bottom section of the painting just to add a little extra touch of detail here. I'm also using opaque white gouache to layer a little bit of sea spray and sea foam over these pebbles that are very close to uh, the water's edge here. Um, as I hope you can see, the art sponge has left some really interesting patterning with the masking fluid across this line here. Uh, but of course the water needs to be going over the stones and not under it. So a little bit of opaque white here and I'm just putting it on with my uh, tree and texture brush, but really any brush that gives you good texture, such as a stippling brush, um, would work really well here as well. And if you don't like using gouache in a watercolour painting, then an opaque watercolour such as Chinese white would work really well too. Um, or you could use something like um, a bleed proof white ink. Uh, just anything opaque that's going to give that impression of a little bit of sea spray coming up and over those stones. And just for a final touch, I'm adding some spatters of white gouache as well, just to really push that sense of a little bit of spray, a little bit of sea sort of goodness coming up from this uh, incoming wave here. And here we are, this is the finished painting. Um, thank you everybody so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had a wonderful time painting this for you today, so I really hope you enjoyed it too. Um, I love the technique of painting those pebbles in one by one. It's slow, but it's, uh, it's worth the time, I believe. Um, anyway, I'd love to hear what you thought of this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed a little trip to the uh, seaside with us. So wishing you all a wonderful uh, rest of the week and very happy painting.